Thank you, Jennifer. Good morning. Welcome. You know, it's absolutely fabulous to be here. And uh, driving in yesterday, I thought one of the most remarkable things, and perhaps one of the most remarkable things about the show is the focus that they have on thanking the PGA Pro, thanking the individuals who are helping to grow this game, uh, thanking the individuals who put so much time and passion. Now, I'm a late adopter of the game. Uh, I'm a high handicapper, have a tremendous uh, passion for the sport. And I would just like to acknowledge, before I talk about the future of technology in golf, three individuals who had a profound impact on my golfing life. I started on a little nine-hole municipal course. Uh, I'm based in Toronto, and a fellow named Vince Dwyer, a Canadian PGA professional, who somehow took me under his wings um, and had the stamina and had the courage and had the patience to take someone who had no game and to try to turn it into a game. Tomorrow night at the Canadian show, Jerry Anderson, who's a Canadian PGA professional, will be indicted, inducted, not indicted, inducted into the Canadian PGA Hall of Fame. Uh, Jerry was on the European tour and he won a substantial number of wins and held the European tour record until Ernie Els took it away from him some 31 years later. And I would also like to thank Rich Smith. You know, I opened the 2010 PGA show in Boston with Jim Remy, talking about the future of golf. And I got to know Rich through Facebook um, by virtue of what he is doing to grow the game. And he has a tremendous passion for everything and growing the game with a drive, chip, and putt. How do we bring in that next generation golfer into the game to continue to grow the game. Now I speak to a tremendous number of different organizations and here we are in the world of golf and everything you hear about the world of golf today is that it is a sport in decline, the numbers are decreasing. But when you look around the show floor and you hear these stories that we are witnessing the death of golf, when you look at the enthusiasm in the audience and in the crowd and, and the booths and the people walking the floor, you realize this is a sport positioned for growth. And do you know why it's positioned for growth? Because we have the emergence of a new generation of individual. Kids who are growing up with technology. Children for whom their mobile device is their entire view into the world. And we have a flood of new, exciting technologies coming into the game. And if we marry these two trends, if we do the right things as PGA professionals, we have the opportunity to kick this sport back into high gear. Now I spend time with a tremendous number of different organizations. Walt Disney has had me in. The Consumer Electronic Association has had me in. NASA had me in. You know, and a few years ago I got a call from the National Aeronautics Space Administration. And you know, they said we would like you, Jim, to come in and talk about the future of space. And I'm sort of looking at the phone and I'm thinking, wow, this is NASA. I said, who's going to be in the room? And they said, we're going to have a number of astronauts. We're going to have a number of astrophysicists. We are going to have people who are looking into deep matter and black holes and analyzing the universe. This sort of freaked me out because, I mean, these are some people whose minds are way out there. So I was working at home the week before, putting together my slide deck, putting together my presentation. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, what can I possibly talk to NASA about? A bunch of astronauts and astrophysicists. And I was working in my PowerPoint deck and I said, good luck, I got one shot to go in here. They might never have me back again. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna talk about George Jetson. I mean, I gotta talk about somewhere, future, space, there's the connection. So I found this picture of George, I found this other picture of George, and I started talking to them about the Jetsons. Well, why would I talk to NASA about the Jetsons? Well, think about this cartoon show, it was set in the year 2062. It purported to show what the world would look like. 100 years out when it first aired in 1962. And think about what George was really doing in this show. George is talking to his boss via FaceTime. He's using Skype. George is getting his news off the internet. And so what I'm thinking and what I'm, the point I'm trying to make to NASA is this. We live in a world in which we have these predictions of science fiction that are set far away in the future and all of a sudden they are becoming real faster than ever before. Time is accelerating, technology is accelerating. We're going to be in this future world faster than we think. 
So I'm thinking to myself, this is a good storyline. I can play with this. I'm thinking, you know, I'm going into NASA. They're only going to have me in once. Look, there is no way that I'm not going into NASA and I'm not going to talk about Spock. I got to talk about Spock. I got one shot at this. So I found this picture of Spock. Any Trekkies in the room? Here's what happens with the Trekkies. Apparently, this is the wrong photo from the wrong episode, and they get all spazzed out and stressed out. You know, and they come up to me afterwards, Mr. Carroll, you're using the wrong photo. But I'm going to stick with the photo because what is important here is the story. What Spock is holding in his hands here is a medical tricorder, a fantastic little concept of the 23rd century that he could hold up next to the head of someone and instantly determine every medical condition that person has ever had or every medical condition they might ever develop. He could get an entire current physiological reading of a human or alien with this fantastic medical tricorder. But think about where we are in the world today. We live in a world today where there are organizations challenging the global scientific community to solve some of the biggest problems of our time, having to do with health care, having to do with education, having to do with the environment, having to do with water. We have something called the XPRIZE Foundation. And Qualcomm, which is one of the world's largest manufacturers of computer chips, put together a $10 million prize to challenge the global scientific community to develop the medical tricorder as seen in the Star Trek television show. And lo and behold, a group of NASA scientists out at NASA's Ames Research Laboratory put together a crowdfunding campaign, raised the necessary funds to develop the Sanadu Scout. This is the medical tricorder of the 23rd century. I can put this to my head. It will take my blood pressure. It will take my glucose. It will do an EKG. It will take my oxygen level. And all of a sudden, we live in a world in which the science of the 23rd century has arrived today. Think about you know, where we are going in the future. You know, I would be on conference stages in Las Vegas just four years ago, talking about 3D printing, talking about this mystical technology of the future. And all of a sudden, we are in a world in which Ping is actually demonstrating the capability to print a putter using 3D printing technology. Folks, what is going to happen in the world of golf is an acceleration of new technology that just doesn't involve clubs, but involves connectivity, that involves interaction, that involves new ways of thinking about the game. And the challenge for the PGA professional is this. Do we view it as a negative, or do we view it as an opportunity to grow the game? Think about how quickly we could be in the world of golf with a game golf device. You know, I've been using game golf and I've got 80 rounds under my belt with this device. But think about what, where this technology could be five years out, 10 years out. Just like the Sanadu Scout, the medical tricorder, maybe this device will do instant swing analysis. Maybe this device will link to smart clothing, you know, which is examining my physiological and muscle movement and build me this, this, this awesome, display of statistics and insight that will help me in that ongoing quest to improve my game. Have you seen that robotic golf device out there, RoboGolf? A $150,000 device that you can use to learn to do your swing? Is this bad or is this different? But what is the impact in the history of technology? The cost of technology always comes down. You might be able to buy this device five or 10 years out for $1,000 because we know the history of computer technology is cost already decreases. One of my favorite phrases comes from the global media magnate Rupert Murdoch, who observed years ago. If you think about what is going on, it's not necessarily big organizations that will win and own and control the future. It's the fast. And that applies to the PGA Pro, because what you are witnessing now is a whole variety of golfers arriving on course with fascinating new technologies. Fascinating new ways of analyzing their game. Fascinating new ways of tracking their game. And here's what I want to do. Think about what's going on in the world of banking. Think about what Apple is doing with Apple Pay. Apple is turning our cell phones, our smartphones, into credit cards. It's going to cause massive change within the industry. Contrast that to a couple of weeks later, I went into my uh, son's high school. They brought 300 kids in the auditorium. And I walked out on stage and said, I understand I'm in a high school. I understand the rules are that we're not supposed to use our cell phones in class. Take them out because we're going to do a poll. And 297 out of 300 kids responded in the first 30 seconds. 
That's the next generation golfer. What are you going to do with that kid whose entire worldview is reflected through their mobile device? So how are we feeling about the future? Well, I've been up here five minutes. I've got you freaked out already. We've got a good majority of the room who are thinking they're only somewhat positioned for success. They're behind in their ability to keep up. We've got a few who are you know, thinking we're toast. It's way too fast. These people were probably making friends with the mini bar last night. They're not feeling good about anything at this point in time, right? They're just waiting for the day to get over. Um, and we've got you know, a good you know, small percentage who are thinking we're extremely well positioned for success. I know who these people are. These are sales executives. They got up this morning, they looked in the mirror, it's gonna be a great day. I'm gonna close some deals, it's gonna be wonderful fun. Kind of fascinating to think about what happens in a fast-paced future. And what I wanna do here with you today is I wanna to talk to you about what's happening in the world of golf and what is it going to mean as we go forward into the future. And I want you to think about this phrase. Bill Gates once made the observation that most people tend to overestimate the rate of change that will occur on a two-year basis they underestimate how much change will occur on a 10-year basis. Go back to 2006. We barely had YouTube. Twitter did not exist. Facebook was a place where teenagers hung out before their parents came along and wrecked it for everyone. Think about how much change has transpired in the world of golf in just the last 10 years. Who would have thought we'd have an initiative like Top Golf, you know, which is essentially, you know, golf with, with, with dart boards. Who would have thought that we would have seen the emergence of fascinating GPS-based technologies that would help us improve our game? And what's gonna happen in the next 10 years as the acceleration of golf technology picks up speed? So I'm gonna talk about five big issues. I'm gonna talk about acceleration. I'm gonna talk about compression. I'm gonna talk about hyper-connectivity. I'm gonna talk about interaction. And I'm gonna talk about generations. Think about what is happening with the acceleration of change that is occurring in this sport. Let's step outside the golf industry and think about what is happening in another industry. Let's think about what's happening to the cars that we drive. You know, I speak at a lot of auto shows. I was with Volvo in uh, North Carolina last week talking about the future of trucking. And think about what could happen with cars and trucks in just the next five years. We're probably gonna have a Siri button in every single car. We're gonna to talk to our cars just as we talk to our iPhones because Apple is out there cutting deals with all the car manufacturers. We're probably gonna have augmented reality heads-up display in our windscreen. You've seen those Burton and Oakley goggles? You've got kids going down a ski hill and they are getting in their goggles real-time updates, real-time Twitter posts, real-time Facebook posts from their friends they can press a button and do a proximity location of where their friends are on the hill. They can get instant analysis of how fast they're skiing or boarding. If you're skiing or boarding, you want to stay behind this person because they're not really paying attention to what they're doing. That type of technology is going to come into our cars before we know it. We're going to have intelligent LED lighting, you know, linked into our cars with our proximity sensors to guide us into parking lots. We're going to have interactive in-car billboards. You know, I might talk to my car and say, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking for three golf courses within five miles. I've, Siri's going to respond, I found you these three. Take me there. And the car's augmented driving technology is going to take over. And not only that, we'll probably have credit card technology embedded in our car. So as we're driving in the front entrance of the golf course, it's going to pay for my tea time. This is real. This is what we're talking about in the auto industry. This is the change that is happening today. And think about where we could be in just five years, 10 years in the world of golf. Are we going to see George Jetson-like technology? Flying golf carts? Well, just think about how quickly our world has changed already. Think about what Bubba has been doing with the Bubba Hover. Who would have imagined five years ago that we'd see magical devices and technologies like this? And envision what the golf cart of the future will look like. There are companies out there already who are talking about integrating into golf carts augmented reality screens, which will show you on the screen in front of you the layout of the hole, your distance, your strokes, your performance, will show you information which we cannot even begin to dream about today. You know that the U.S. Army today is already developing autonomous self-driving golf carts. Can we imagine where this is going to take us five to ten years out? 
It's going to bring a lot of change and a lot of opportunity into the industry because the world is accelerating around us. And it's our job as PGA professionals to ensure that we have an open mind to the opportunity that this is bringing to us. Time compression. I was fortunate enough in September to be the opening speaker for the Sporting Fitness and Industry Association. CEOs of all kinds of sporting technology companies. Roger Goodell of the NFL followed me on stage and he was talking about how to get more kids involved in sport today in the era of childhood obesity. And I reached out to Derek Sprague, president of PGA of America, to ask him, well, what do you think is happening with the world of golf with technology? And he made the observation that if you think about what has happened, the technology that only used to be available to the Golf Pro five years ago has now become mainstream. It has now become something available to the masses. And the PGA Pro is having to learn how to integrate more sophisticated teaching technologies into their teaching regimen. And it is happening at a furious pace. You think about you know, the swing analyzer software, you think about you know, the technologies that you will see on the show floor and cast your mind out to the future. Smart, intelligent clothing. We are witnessing the emergence of clothing that has all kinds of biometric capability built into it. Sensors, and all kinds of linked technology that are going to lead us into a new era of swing analysis, which we can even barely begin to comprehend today. The big story at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas this year were virtual headsets, virtual 3D. And think about how quickly we are going to see the emergence of virtual 3D golf technology, and that becomes a method for instruction. And again, do we look at this as something that is bad, or is it just something that is different? Do we look at it as something that is negative because it is taking away, it's away from the purity of golf instruction? Or do we view it as an opportunity to grow the game because this next generation is wired from birth? Derek also made the observation from my talk to the Sporting Fitness Industry Association that the typical golf pro today now has to master issues of yield management, mobile platforms. It's almost as if they're competing in the same sophisticated space as airlines and hotels in managing inventory with the emergence of golf now and all these other fascinating booking tools which have appeared. And we experienced that. My son and I were down at Rancho Mignana outside of uh, Phoenix, Carefree, Arizona. And, you know, we were uh, looking for a tea time. We were sitting in the parking lot. And they had a certain rate there. And Thomas said, you know, wait 10 minutes and the rate will go down. And we sat and we waited 10 minutes and the rate went down. We got a great deal. Think about what this does in terms of revenue. Think about what this does in terms of course management. How quickly are we adapting to this reality? And then there is hyperconnectivity. This changes everything. You know the big trend which is playing out over the next 10 years is every device that is a part of our daily life is going to become plugged in. We're going to be aware of its location. We're going to be aware of its status. We're going to be aware you know, of, of, of how it's working. You know, I was speaking at a uh, healthcare conference a couple of weeks ago. I said this could get weird, could get a little out of hand. One morning I'll get up I'll get on my weigh scale. It's going to send an email to my fridge. You know, don't let Jim in today. He's not living up to the terms of his wellness contract. Then it's going to contact my insurance company, you know, cut off coverage. But at home, I've got the Wythings Wi-Fi body scale. I'm down 30 pounds from my peak. I'm pretty proud of my progress. And every morning I get up, I get on it. It takes my weight, takes my BMI, takes my fat mass, and sends it via Wi-Fi to a password-protected website, which builds all these cool graphs and charts to keep me on the right track. You are hearing about this in the context of the Internet of Things. You know, garage doors that open or close, dependent upon proximity. If your iPhone knows you're driving towards your home, it will open the garage door. Ceiling fans, which will slow down or speed up based on them sensing whether you're home or not. Smart locks that are enabled by cell phones. Do you know you can even buy a barbecue today that will send you a text message when the meat needs to be flipped? Staggering rates of change, some of it fascinating, some of it weird. And think about what is happening in the world of healthcare. Think about what is happening with the emergence of blood pressure cuffs, you know, which link into your iPhone, which suddenly lets the world of medical care change 
methodologies for the delivery of healthcare. Do you know what is happening here? Innovation in the healthcare sector is shifting from healthcare companies to Silicon Valley. It's shifting from regular healthcare organizations to technology companies who we know innovate a lot faster than we do. And think about the impact of game golf. Here's my dispersion rate, not too great. You should see my sons, pretty more incredible. You know, but think about what is happening here. Suddenly the introduction of technology that we can use GPS to get detailed insight into our game and into our performance and into our weaknesses overlaid on Google Maps so we can look at our entire game. What is, what is happening here is the emergence of technologies of golf carts with HD cameras built on top that captures every swing. So at the end of the day, you can share your round and highlight clips with your friends. The introduction of new ways of interacting, the same thing that is happening in the world of healthcare, is happening in the world of golf, and it's happening in the world of sports. The speed of innovation is shifting from within our industry, and it's shifting to the speed of Silicon Valley. Companies that innovate at the speed of Apple and Facebook and PayPal and it introduces a lot of issues. You know, in the world of healthcare, there are big issues where the F FDA is looking at these healthcare devices and saying, are they accurate? Will they work right? Should we verify them? Should we put a seal of approval? And later on at lunchtime today, we're gonna hear about PGA Verified, which is a program to do exactly that in the world of golf. How do we apply some standards and methodology to put a seal of approval on this flood of technologies coming into the game. We're headed for a world of constant interaction. You know, this, this, this world we live in is absolutely fascinating. Think about what is happening, where in one course they've put HD cameras around every single par three hole, and it automatically films every player, so if somebody gets an ace, somebody gets a hole in one, it's captured on film. And you can share that, you can put it on Facebook, you can put it on YouTube. You can share your glory with your friends. Think about the opportunities this has to provide even more excitement into the game. Think about what's gonna happen with the arrival of drone technology. Think about how quickly drones are coming into the sport. Drone technology is a little bit like it's 1994, the internet just came along and it's opened up the minds of everybody to opportunity. You know, I wrote a blog post some time ago and I sent it to my club pro and I said, you know, what's gonna happen when GoPro has a drone and I'm gonna show up at the first tee and it's locked onto me via GPS and it's gonna be hovering over my head and it's gonna film my entire round. Do you have a club rule and a club policy for that? Do you have a club rule and a club policy for the arrival of drones on the golf course? Because this is gonna happen before you know it. And do we embrace this or do we look at it with horror? Drone technology is absolutely fascinating. You can actually go to an afternoon swimming pool rave party in Las Vegas and they will deliver bottle service via a drone. And you're there and you're partying away and the drone comes down with a container with your bottle of Cristal and it's delivered and you're the coolest guy on the planet. You know, what's gonna happen when we have drone food delivery in the golf course? where it's locked onto the GPS of where your cart is. And all of a sudden, we're introducing new ways of interacting and supporting the client. And then there's generations. You know, we kind of live in a fascinating period of time. Let me ask a little question. How many of you, the very first computer course you ever took involved learning, COBOL, BASIC, or FORTRAN? Hold up your hands and look around the room. Look at all us baby boomers. We are the only generation in the history of mankind who have ever met the punch card. Do not fold, spindle, or mutilate. And we still don't know what spindle means. And I think what has happened is because we grew up in a period of time in which technology was really ugly and difficult. It has caused us to feel battered and bruised by the emergence of all this technology. And we might look at all these new things coming about, all these new inventions, and we might be a golf purist, and we might view them with suspicion, and our attitude might be that, as captured by Ogden Nash, that progress is great, but it's gone on way too long. Make it stop, make it go away. I don't wanna to have to deal with all this change. I don't like technology's intrusion into the purity of the game. But the focus of every single PGA Pro is this. 
What do we do to continue to grow the game? And what do we do to continue with our passion to improve the play capabilities of our game? And we live in a transformative period of time. Here's a little cartoon that captures the essence of the world that we live in today. Here is a child helping his father install some software on the home computer. OK, Dad, you've loaded the disk. What you got to do is you got to transfer the file to here. And then you're going to double click to open. And the last frame really puts in perspective the unique period of time in which we find ourselves today. See, Dad, that's how you install an internet porn filter. Think about it. The kid's helping the father install the internet porn filter to keep the kid away from the porn. Dad's going to leave the room, and the kid's just going to uninstall the software. And so while we who grew up with technology, you know, during an ugly period of time, we get a little bit frustrated. We feel like we're a little bit behind. We get a little bit concerned. We like routine. We don't like change. We wish a lot of this change would go away. And this is what Einstein said. If you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again in a changing world and expect a different result, well, that's how we define insanity. Folks, the thing is, this next generation is fundamentally different. They thrive on change. They thrive on technology. Do you know that half of the global population right now is under the age of 25? We know that they're wired. We know they're entrepreneurial. We know they're collaborative. We know they're change-oriented. And they are now coming into every single industry, including the golf industry, and are saying, we can do things differently. We have mobile devices. We have GPS. We have technologies. We have smart clothing. We have a flood of ideas which can help us to grow the game in new and different ways. Years ago, I spoke to the, the National Recreation and Parks Association and was addressing the issue of how do we solve the childhood obesity crisis in the US. And I was talking about an initiative that they have in Manhattan, Pac-Manhattan, where people actually dress up as Pac-Man and run around the streets of Manhattan you know, and utilizing their mobile devices to track where people are. What a fantastic concept, as crazy as it might sound. If it is doing something to draw people into sport, it is a good thing. Think about the baseball bat in the future. Every single baseball bat in the future is going to have embedded technology, which will automatically do swing analysis. And every single golf club of the future will have the same technology embedded in it. So what do you need to do? I think you need to think this. Technology is coming. It is a massive wave. It is underway. It's going to speed up change in an industry that is very traditional. And the real question you need to ask yourself, it's not bad. It's different. And the other way you need to think about this is, you know, this. Some people see a trend and see a threat. Real innovators see the same trend and see an opportunity. So what do you do to go forward into the future? Well, choose what type of person you want to be. There are three types of people. There are people who watch the future happen. There are people who make the future happen. And there are people who sit back and go, whoa, where did that come from? How did that happen? What you really need to do is this. Your future role as a PGA professional in the world of golf is that you need to think big, start small, and scale fast. Thank you very much.